we're out here in the country. I'm gonna do a panic stop. I'm gonna go 100 kilometers an hour, which is like 62 miles per hour. And at a point here on the road, like this access road right here, okay, that's 100 kilometers an hour. I'm gonna brake as hard as I can. All right, so quickly, I'm just gonna jump out and mark this road. mark there that we'll be able to reference going forward. Alright, now I'm going to go repeat that stop again and just see how close I get back to that particular mark, just to see if it's a good mark. And then once the brakes are all fixed, we'll go ahead and Do it again. Let's see if our stopping distances have shortened. Who drives that slow on a country straight road on a beautiful bright day? Like how much time do you have to have on your hands to drive 30 miles an hour down a country road like this? With your mask on. Okay. <coughs> All right, I'm gonna back up a little bit just to get a little more runway here, guys. No cars, no cars, no cars, good. I just wanna make sure I'm at about 100 again. Okay, finally we got a break in the action here. All right, 100 kilometers an hour, braking as hard as I can at that road. Here we go. Come on, Honda. Okay, that's 100, so we'll hold 100, hold 100 until the road. And here's the road, as soon as I hit that road, the middle of the road, stop. Jeez, we went by the one, the mark that time. By about 10. There's the mark there. So we were we were actually longer that time. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna leave the mark there. It's around there. Between there and there's a crack in the road. So let's say between there and the crack in the road is pretty much where we stopped. Um I think that's a good enough benchmark for uh see if there's any material difference in these bigger brakes I'm putting on. Alrighty, here are the parts we're going to put on the Ridgeline. Uh, these are for a Honda Pilot, like a 2010 Honda Pilot. And we're going to do the rotors. The rotors are bigger than the Ridgeline rotors, but apparently they bolt on the same way and they, everything fits within, the, fits within the wheels. Got some calipers here for the Pilot. All ready to go. These calipers are apparently bigger than the Ridgeline calipers. I haven't looked at them yet, but uh, we'll we'll find out. Of course, new pads and some hardware. And while we're in there, put a couple of new brake hoses on too. These things tend to deteriorate over time, both not only outside but also inside. So. For the relatively low price, we'll replace the hoses while we're in there. And uh, of course, we need a whole bunch of new fluid through the system. So we'll get started now, tearing off the old uh, parts, and then we can get to the new stuff.
right, there's the old stuff. Pads are really good on this still, but that's okay. Pads are cheap. Now, the old brake line looks fine, but as I said, you never know what's going on inside these brake lines. So if you're doing a big job like this, changing calipers, you may as well replace that rubber brake line as well. Okay, starting to tear this down. Got the caliper actually already pulled back two bolts just hang it up there for a minute and then the this whatever you call this here this carrier this mounting bracket there's two uh, big bolts holding it on here's the pads the old pads are actually really good I only put these on last year just not happy with the braking performance so hopefully this pilot upgrade Helps us out. You can just see here, I've got the 19 millimeter socket on the one bolt and then the other one's here. And a big long breaker bar to bust it loose. Two bolts. All right, I got this manual impact driver here. Sometimes these come out, sometimes they don't. These ones both loosened. If they don't loosen, you're, you're in for a bit of a trouble drill, drilling them out. Um, but we got this these ones out and now those screws really don't do anything because these rotors basically get glued on with rust Come on, baby. <coughs> Hit it with a little magic sauce here. And because we're replacing these, we don't need to be too careful about contaminating the rotor with a bunch of grease or anything. Let's see if some of that works its way in. These get really stuck on. Oh, there it comes. There it comes. There's two threaded holes here that you can put a little bolt in. If, if, if your rotor is really stuck on, you can thread this bolt in, or if you have two bolts, thread both in, and then turn them clockwise and then that'll help pry the, pry the rotor off when it's really stuck. This one I just banged on for a little while and eventually it came loose.
All right, so here's the new rotors, the Pilot rotors versus the Ridgeline rotors. Um, they are bigger. It's 13 inches in diameter versus 12 and a half on the Ridgeline. So there's a full in inch of diameter. And you can see the surface area you know, of, of, the, of the Pilot is visibly more than the, the Ridgeline. I mean, obviously it's three inches from the from the hub out to the edge here and three and a quarter here. So a half inch on each side or a quarter inch on each side, half inch total diameter difference. So there is a difference in. And then of course the pads, the old Ridgeline pads versus the pilot pads. You can see There's your extra quarter inch or so of material. Um, they're a little bit wider, but they're also longer. You've got more material pushing onto a bigger surface. All right, now time for the fun part to put this new stuff on. Clean this a little bit up. It's pretty clean. Just get rid of any loose rust around the hub here. And just to be nice to whoever has to change these in the future, if it's not me, I'll just put a little bit of any C's on here. Kind of smear it around a little bit. I don't know if this makes much difference, but can't hurt. Kill the grass. And wipe all that brake cleaner off with a clean rag. Now. We'll set this on here and we have to line up the two screw holes. Where are they? No. Like that. Come on you, there we go. little guy and put him in right here come on you get in there there we go now I'll put a ratchet on this Change the position of the camera there. To 
to show the install of the new caliper knife. Still got the old one hanging from the brake hose here, and I'm going to leave it until we're ready to hook the brake hose up to the new one. Okay, so here's the new one. And we know this is for the left side because we've got the bleeder screw pointing up and the brake hose is going to come up like this. So we'll mount this on here. I'll try the bottom bolt first. Come on, get in there. Found it. Just do it finger tight. And then the top bolt should be a little easier. There we go. We'll do that finger tight. These are 19 millimeter and they're to be Tightened to 79.6 foot-pounds. Not 79, not 80, 79.6. Truthfully, that's probably a bit too precise. We're just going to do 80 foot-pounds. Okay, now we'll take this bottom bolt out. And I think that's a 17 millimeter, is it? What's this here? Yeah, 17 millimeter. And we'll take that right out. Come on. Come on, bolt. Keep going. There we go. It's a nice new bolt. And we're just going to rotate the caliper up out of the way so we can put the pads in. Like that. Okay. These come with nice new clips already installed. Sliding nice, okay. Now the inboard pad has the noise maker when the pads get worn down. It's on the inside and at the top, so that's how you tell your left from your right. If you're putting a pad on and that thing is at the bottom, you've got the wrong side. I'm just gonna put a touch of this silicone multi-purpose brake lube stuff on the ears of the pads. Not too much, I don't want it to make a mess. And I don't want to touch the friction surface of the pad either. Slide that bad boy in here. Come on, you. And I just noticed this little guy popped off. Make sure that stays on there. Little tiny bit of this silicone goop. on the back here, not too much, just so it doesn't squeak. Just a little thin smattering of this grease here where the calipers touch, where the caliper uh, pushes on the pad. Okay, 
Let's repeat for the other side. We'll, we'll bring this caliper back down and hopefully it's pushed in enough that yes, it can seat itself there. You can put this bolt back in. Okay, now the brake hose. So we'll disconnect it up here first. I've already loosened it with a... Okay, time for the brake hose. Uh, I've actually started at the top here. Um, these are keyed just to fit up in here in a certain way. There's a, a sort of semicircle shape with a flat edge and they just pop up in there and then there's this clip that gets pushed back in to hold it steady. So it's very steady there now. Uh, now what we can do, we'll attach this bracket loosely. Anti-seize. Now the brake hose kind of comes up from the bottom and just sits in there like that and this threads in. And it's a 12 millimeter just to cinch it up. Okay, now the brake hose can go here. There's two copper washers. One goes there, and this brake hose kind of just fits in this slot here. And then the other copper washer goes on the bolt. And with any luck, we'll thread right in here. Come on, you. And that guy is, that's a 14 millimeter. And we'll snug that up. <laughs> okay, and now we can hook up our brake line up here. Rag here in case we leak. We'll pull that cap off and try and just pop this right in there like that without spilling too much. And then we can get this threading in before we start making a mess. Oh. This is keyed, so as long as it's up in there, it's, it's held solid. There. Now, we're all back together. The final step, is there's a bunch of air in here, is to bleed these brakes. Now, I don't have anybody here to help me bleed the brakes, so I'm going to gravity bleed them. Um, 
Here's the brake bleeder screw. Okay, the brake job's done. New brake hose, caliper pads, and a new rotor uh, from a Honda Pilot going on the Ridgeline. Now the last thing to do is to put the tire back on. And I wonder if the brakes fit inside the original wheel. That's the only last thing to know. The internet says it works, but does it fit? And yes, 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 22 millimeter, just put that on to hold a couple in place here. Yes, it fits. Okay, here's a comparison of the size of the calipers. This is the new one from a Honda Pilot. This is the factory one from the Ridgeline. And as you can see, the caliper itself is bigger on the Pilot, just like the pads and the rotors are. The total width of this caliper is nine and a half inches. The Ridgeline's just about nine inches. So it's about a half an inch longer. And then they're wider too, to accommodate the wider pads two inches on the ridge line and about two and a quarter just width here of the piston uh, on the on the pilot so all around a bigger caliper bigger pads and a bigger rotor pilot versus ridge line all right the brakes are done we're gonna try the stopping test again an hour just about there and at this oil field road I'm gonna slam on the brakes as hard as I can and see where we end up relative to our marks so there's a hundred so we'll just hold it at a hundred hold it at a hundred hold it at a hundred and at this road I'm gonna slam on it And that definitely grabs harder. The ABS was going. There's rubber marks on the road. And up there is our red mark. I'm just gonna paste this off back to the truck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 big steps, I'd say that's about 10 yards. So about 30 feet. About 30 feet stopping distance we took off with that brake upgrade. So that's great, I'm impressed with that. It shouldn't stop here in the middle of the road for too long. 
But yeah, the brakes feel way better. They grab a lot more. The ABS is on when you're on the on the brakes hard. And just paced out roughly a 30 foot reduction in stopping distance. So very happy with that. Uh, the Pilot upgrade is a nice one uh, over the stock Ridgeline brakes. Total cost was right around 400 Canadian dollars for everything. So, you know, that's mostly rock auto parts. Um, but, you know, that's a, that's a pretty, pretty good uh, upgrade for 400 bucks. Again, thanks for watching as always. Stay tuned for more videos like this. Thank you.